Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to use a $30 Wise Camera V3 with Blue Iris. Now, if you're not familiar with the Wise Camera, it's a small camera. It can be used indoor or outdoor. There's different versions. This one in particular is the Wise Cam V3. You will need this camera. You'll need a micro SD card micro SD card reader. So what we're gonna do is pull down a custom firmware for the camera. Out of the box, the camera won't work with Blue Iris. You need to put a custom firmware on the camera so it will use RTSP. Now, I'll say this right off the bat, it's use at your own risk. This was a beta firmware that Wise put out in 2021, I believe, for V3. They have not updated it. The camera's so inexpensive that just to show you exactly what this camera is, you can get them on Amazon. I actually bought mine for $29.95. So the price does fluctuate. So keep watch on that. They do sales. Most people use this camera for cloud recording. They don't actually use the local RTSP because it's not officially supported. So the first thing we need to do is download the Wise app, create an account, because you're going to set up this camera just as if you were going to use it with the cloud services. Then once it's set up, we're going to put the firmware on the memory card and do a process that I'm gonna show you with this camera to have it put the correct firmware on it for RTSP. So out of the back of the camera, there is a micro USB dongle and they, they give you a micro USB cable, plug that in there. And then the other end is a USB A. They do give you a brick if you're plugging it in. I have a USB hub right here that I'm going to plug it into. Let's see if it'll turn on. Yep, I see the red light. We'll let that boot up. So like I mentioned, download the Wise app. And once this camera's fully booted up, we'll be able to see it in the Wise app and add it. Once the camera is added and connected to your Wi-Fi, this is a Wi-Fi only camera. It's not gonna be plugged in via ethernet. We will then proceed with changing the firmware so that it can send to Blue Iris. All right, so let's open up the Wise app. I've already created an account. So you'll be brought to this screen once you do. It says new device. So we're gonna click the plus, click cameras. And this is the Wise Cam V3. If you have another version, you can click that here. The firmware that's out only works with the V3 and V2 and I think one other version, but I would suggest using the latest camera. So let's do V3. Plug your Wise Cam into a power outlet. The light in the front should be flashing red. And as you can see, it is flashing red. So let's click next. Pull the base away from your Wisecam V3. Press setup under your camera. Okay, so this is the base. There's an SD card slot, and then there's a setup button over here. So we are going to push the setup button, and we should hear a beep. Ready to connect. I guess that was more than a beep, but that's what we need. So we're gonna click I heard ready to connect and click next. Your location is used to scan for nearby Wi-Fi networks. I suppose I need to give that my location. So we'll type in your network name, your Wi-Fi network name and password here. Once you click next, you'll be brought to a QR code. Now this is pretty cool. You can actually scan the QR code with the camera. So if I turn the camera here, Ready to connect. QR code scanned. Please wait. That's pretty cool. Talk about a good user experience. So we'll click I heard. QR code scanned. Next. Setup completed. And that's it. It's connected. And we're going to say no thanks to the cloud recording. No thanks, or maybe later, to sharing the device. And it's going to ask to upgrade the firmware. We're not going to do that right now because we are going to a different firmware altogether. So there you go. You can see my cameras. If we click the little gear icon and we go to advanced settings, there's no spot in these settings called RTSP. There's no way to put in a URL or use an even password to create a URL for RTSP, but that is going to change. So now that we have the camera set up in the app, it's time to take our micro SD card, don't lose this tiny little thing, and put it into an SD card reader, download the firmware, put it onto this card, and then we'll move back to the camera. Let's go to File Explorer, and we'll just make sure it's there. Okay, USB drive F, 
There shouldn't be anything on it. This is a brand new card. By the way, if this card was used to record footage on this camera or somewhere else, you do want to format that card. There's a utility called Rufus that you could use to format the card. In this case, there hasn't been anything on it, so I really don't need to format it. Okay, so now that we know the card is there, we will go over to this site, which will be in the description below. This is GitHub. It's a GitHub repository because Wise removed this firmware off of their site. So now you have to go over to the GitHub of this person. Thank you very much for putting that there. And this person owns the repository. Again, I'll have the link below to this, the supported cameras, V3, V2, and the Pan V1. Click on Wisecam V3 firmware. And then over here, there's a download button. So that's what you'll click. And then you'll open the folder that it downloads. It's only nine megs. And there it is. So all we need to do is drag this download bin dot bin file, make sure it says dot bin to the drive that we plugged in the micro SD drive. So just click drag should copy. And there it is. Now once we've copied to the drive, we can right click we're done with the computer. Now, right click, click eject and pop the SD card out of the SD card reader. So here's my SD card. It's now got the bin file on it, which is the firmware that we're going to put onto the camera. So let's click back over to the camera view. And we are now going to unplug this camera from power. So I'm just going to unplug from here. So now it's got no power. You want to make sure that is the case. And on the bottom, it's a little bit hard to see on camera. There's two rubber spots. One is the setup button, which we'll use in a minute. And the other one says SD card on it. And the SD card one, you can pull open and there's a slot for an SD card. Now, normally this is where you would record clips, video footage uh, from the camera. But in this case, we are going to insert the micro SD card to install the firmware. So let's push that in, make sure it gives you a click in and we can leave this little tab open because we're going to take the SD card out once we're done with this process. Before you plug it back into power, you need to make sure that you hold down this setup button. You'll hear there's a click. You need to hold down that setup button while you plug it into power until this LED turns purple. It can be a little bit hard to do both things at once. Probably the easiest thing would be to wrap this around, hold that, hold that. Okay, holding down. You can see it's red. And there's the purple. So we can release the setup button. And now it's going to take a few minutes to install that particular firmware on it. And it's done. You'll know it's done because it'll be a solid white light throughout the process. It takes a few minutes. You'll see it turn off, turn back on. You'll hear a couple of clicks and noises, and then it will turn white. When you open the app back up and you go to the live view, you should now see the camera. And also it turns red when someone's viewing in the app. So now the next step is to go back into the settings. And when we go back into the settings, we're going to want to go to advanced settings and scroll all the way to the bottom. And now you should see the RTSP option, which you did not see before we did this update. So you click on the RTSP option, toggle it on, you'll be prompted to create a username and password. So you can create whatever username and password you'd like. So let's call this wise three, whoops, three. And for the password, we'll do wise three cam. It has to be bef between two and 10 characters. So we'll do done and generate URL. And that's the URL that we need to plug into blue iris. So you'll want to write this down or copy it so that you have it on your blue iris PC. 
One quick note, I have heard of some people running into issues when they try to add it to Blue Iris or some other camera software. If you do, just try restarting the camera as a troubleshooting option. Usually that fixes the problem. One other thing is you'll notice in the RTSP URL, there's an IP address, and that IP address is what was given to the camera from your router. You might want to go into your router and make that a static address. It's not critical, but if for some reason the power were to be turned off to the camera and turned back on, it might change the address, and then you'll lose it in Blue Iris. So if you can, make that a static IP in your router. So let's go over to the Blue Iris machine, and let's see if we can get this added. Okay, so once Blue Iris is open, we need to go to the top right to the plus, click Add Camera. We'll call this WiseCam V3, Wise3. It is going to be a network IP camera. We can enable audio. I'm going to disable motion sensor for now, and we'll enable direct to disk. Click OK. And now you're brought to this screen. So what you want to do is change from HTTP to RTSP. And you're not going to put the full URL in here as is. In some programs you would, but in Blue Iris, the easiest way to do this is to put the IP that's in the URL, that 168.4.107, and we're going to do forward slash live. For the username, we're going to put the username, which is the first in the RTSP URL that you're given. It's going to be the username colon the password. So my username is wise3. My password is capital W, wise3, cam. And then we're going to click OK. And we'll click OK again. And we'll see if it finds it. Because this is a Wi-Fi camera, it might take an extra couple of seconds to find the camera, grab the RTSP stream. So just give it a minute. And there it is. It came up. Like I said, if you have trouble, try rebooting the camera. And I'm actually, you can see there's overlays on top of overlays here. Let me just right click, go to camera settings, video, and I'm going to uncheck display overlays and click OK. If you want to make any changes to the camera, like for example, this Wise logo, turning that off, you do that in the app. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Any other changes to motion detection, sensitivity, etc., that's all done inside the Wise app. So last thing is we can take that memory card back out of the camera, unless you want to use it to write footage to it, but by default it will write footage to it. But if you want to reuse that card for something else or use it to do this to another camera, if you've bought multiple, we're going to go ahead and pop that SD card out now. So I'm just going to pull the power on the camera, go back to the bottom here. We left it open and we'll click the card, pull it out. There it is. And since I'll be recording in Blue Iris, I'm not going to record into the camera. We can put the little weather sealed rubber cover back on. And that's it. The camera is ready to go. So we'll plug it back in. We'll go back into Blue Iris and make sure that it comes back up. All right, there it is. It's back up. Now keep in mind, this is a Wi-Fi camera. So you're probably not going to get quite as good a quality. You can see there is some degradation of the image there, but it's pretty good. I mean, for a $30 camera, I'm impressed. It's pretty easy to do this. As a note, the camera does come with some mounting accessories, comes with like a sticky pad and there's a little screw hole if you wanted to drill it and mount it to something. So pretty nifty little device. Now I'm keeping all the cloud recording off. You could use the cloud recording in addition to using the Blue Iris recording, but since I have Blue Iris, I'm gonna do everything local. I also will likely put this on a separate Wi-Fi network that is on a VLAN that's segregated from the internet. Just like all my other security cameras, my recommendation is keep your security cameras not connected to the internet if possible. I'm not sure how this will react to that. Uh, I'll probably do a follow-up video, so get subscribed if you are not, and if you like content about Blue Iris, uh, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you.
I'll have affiliate links below for the camera and the SD card, as well as an affiliate link if you don't have Blue Iris yet where you can purchase Blue Iris. We appreciate you using those. Also, like I mentioned, I will have the link to the firmware download to the GitHub repository that I showed earlier in the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or if you just want to say hi. And also give us a thumbs up if you found this helpful. We will see you in the next one. Take care.